we're going to be looking at examples of circular motion. For a car taking a corner along a level road, it is the friction between the tyre and the road that is providing the centripetal force. For a satellite in a circular orbit around a planet, it is the gravitational force that the planet exerts on the satellite that provides the centripetal force. If we consider an object that is going around a loop the loop, at the top of the loop, it is the weight of the object and the normal reaction on the object that provides the centripetal force. At the midway height of the loop, it is the normal reaction that provides the centripetal force. And at the bottom of the loop, it is the normal reaction minus the weight that provides the centripetal force, because that will give you a net or resultant force towards the centre of the circle, which is our centripetal force. This slide is summarising the loop the loop for at the top, mid height, and at the bottom. And when the car is at the top of the loop, the normal reaction force will equal the centripetal force minus the weight. And when the car is at the bottom of the loop, you can see the normal reaction force equals the centripetal force plus the weight. So if we are assuming that the car is travelling at a constant speed around the loop, then the centripetal force remains the same. So you can see then that the normal reaction force has its least value when the car is at the top of the loop. And that's because the normal reaction force is working with the weight to provide the centripetal force. However, the normal reaction force has its greatest value when the car is at the bottom of the loop. And that is because the normal reaction force has to provide the centripetal force as well as overcome the weight of the car. For an object that is forming a horizontal pendulum, it is the tension in the string that is providing the centripetal force. The weight of the object which acts vertically downwards does not contribute to the centripetal force. For an object that is moving to form a vertical pendulum, you can see that it is similar to the loop the loop, except rather than the normal reaction force, we have the tension in the string. And you can see that the tension in the string will have its lowest value when the object is at the top of the loop because it's working with the weight to provide the centripetal force. But the tension has its lowest value when the object is at the bottom of the loop as it's working against the weight to provide the centripetal force. For a conical pendulum, it is the a horizontal component of the tension that is providing the centripetal force and the horizontal component is opposite to the angle theta so that means we use the sine term so it's t sine theta which is providing the centripetal force and so we've said for a conical pendulum our t sine theta is equal to our centripetal force that is if we consider the horizontal direction. If we consider the vertical direction, we can say the vertical component of tension, which is T cos theta, equals the weight. And if we divide these two equations, so we take equation 1 and divide it by equation 2, we get this, where T sine theta divided by T cos theta the t's cancel and sine divided by cos gives you tan theta and that will equal our mv squared divided by r divided by our mg.
the m's cancel and it simplifies to tan theta will equal v squared divided by rg so you can see that the radius of the circle that the object will move through is independent of the mass of the object which depends upon the speed and the angle that the pendulum is making with the vertical. An aeroplane needs to bank, be at an angle relative to the horizontal in order for it to turn left or right, so that is to take a corner. And it's not about the weight, but it's about the lift force, which is always perpendicular to the surface of the wings. And this lift force needs a component in the horizontal direction, so that is L sine theta, to provide the centripetal force in order to take the corner. This theory is similar to the conical pendulum in that tan theta will equal V squared divided by RG. For a car on a frictionless banked track, it's the horizontal component of the normal reaction force on the car that provides the centripetal force. So that is N sine theta. And again, this theory is similar to the conical pendulum. So we could say that tan theta will equal V squared divided by RG for a frictionless banked track.